The definition of diversity may be as diverse as the term itself. For me, diversity is simply the simultaneous existence of seven billion different realities. In other words, there are as many realities as there are people on this planet. Now, understanding, respecting, and ultimately celebrating this diversity may not be so simple. First of all, it calls for a vision on how to make it possible for all these different realities to coexist in peace. Second, it requires a set of actions in order to implement that vision. On the Hello Mahalo vlog series, we will be speaking to people from all over the world who have taken that step to transform their vision into action. We hope to inspire you. Joining me today is Maria Wen Adcock, journalist, author with an extensive experience in marketing, and founder of Bicultural Mama. Thank you so much for being with us here today, Maria. Thank you for having me. I'm really honored to be here. To get started, I wanted to ask you to explain to us what is Bicultural Mama and what is its main focus. Bicultural Mama is my personal blog where I focus on topics mainly on parenting but with a cultural slant it's named by cultural mama because i do have a bicultural family it's a mixture of chinese culture and my husband's um, european american culture and i do have a cultural slant on it that is actually open to all cultures but i do tend to focus a little more on the asian aspect because that's personally what i know in addition to talking about parenting and cultural or you know multicultural bicultural topics i also have posts on food and travel what kind of impact do you hope to achieve with this well i hope that the content that i share on my site will be helpful to my readers um, that's ultimately what you want to do is add value to your readers and have them keep coming back for more. Um, on the personal side, um, the impact to me is that it's very fulfilling because I've always had an interest in writing. Uh, for most of my career, I was not in writing. I was doing corporate marketing. And now I kind of feel like I've come full circle to something that I've had a passion with since I was a child. And so um, it's been very impactful positively for me. Given recent world events and what may be perceived as an increase in like hate speech. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that on the other hand, there has been also an increase in topics related to like tolerance and multiculturalism? I think in general, if you look at websites or the blogosphere, there has been an increase um, in talking about kindness and tolerance. At least I've seen that looking through um, the internet. I think that this is a good start for like trying to come back any of the negativity and hate is really um, education about the positives that can come with um, tolerance and kindness. I mean, these are kind of basic things you would think. Um, be accepting. Don't, don't be a bully. You know, you think these are basic things and it has been surprising in a way that now it's all in the open that a lot of people are very pro-bully and Pro, pro hate, and it just seems to go against the core of what we teach our children. In these last six years um, running by Cultural Mama, what have been the main challenges as a blog? I would say one of the main challenges is the time aspect for creating content. Um, I have two young children, um, currently one is still in diapers, and I work around their schedule um, in terms of when I do my work. And right now it is pretty limited. So just that time to create the content um, is can be very challenging. Another aspect related to time is the social media part of it. Social media has really emerged over the last few years. and. Anyone who has a website has probably realized that without social media, it's very difficult to um, get your content out there. You can have the absolutely best content, but if no one knows about it, you're not going to have readers. The social media aspect takes up a lot of time. It's almost like a separate job, but it's necessary. Another related challenge to that is um, resources or resources. Uh, so for example, 
some bloggers and uh, you know website admins they hire other people to to handle their social media or different aspects of their website you need to have financial resources for that and so uh, that can be challenging what do you do first you know it's like the chicken or the egg you know one leads to the other so I hope that as my children um, become older and that my, my time constraints have lessened that I'll be able to really put much more time and financial resources towards um, managing my site and really growing it. That is one of my goals. How important is face-to-face -face contact for a blogger? You mean at events? Or, yeah. Yes. Um, I think it's, it's important to a certain extent. Um, it depends on if you can do it because obviously if, if you live in a place where you don't have access to for example, New York events like I do, then it's more difficult. I think it's it can help, but I think you can still be a successful blogger even if you live in the middle of nowhere, not not close to any events, uh, because your readers will see you on your site. They can develop a relationship with you through the digital aspects of um, your website and the internet, and that's the great thing about technology. Like, I got to know you. I haven't met you, but I feel like I know you. Exactly. <laughs> I wanted to go back now and focus a little bit uh, on the question of multiculturalism. What do you think is actually the main challenge in terms of the celebration of multiculturalism? For me personally, the challenge I've had is trying to ensure that my children are exposed to all sides of their heritage. So in my case, I live in an area where there is some diversity, but there aren't really a lot of Asians. And so for her, my child, to be exposed to Chinese culture, I try to do things personally, like um, whether it's get library books that um, have Chinese characters or Asian characters or introduce her to some friends who are Chinese, but also having to go to Chinese school on the weekends. And that's really where she is exposed to hundreds of other children with the same background, and she's learning the language. Uh, but most of the week, she's not really exposed to it except to, to just me. So I do the best I can, and I'm still working on that, and I want to make sure that that heritage is passed down to my children. It requires a lot of personal effort, first of all, for you to bring up your children in a bicultural way. Mm -hmm. And it does require a lot of effort for you to run Bicultural Mama. What is mm -hmm. the motivation that gets you through all these challenges? Uh, well, there's a few motivations. For me, it's personally fulfilling. As I mentioned before, um, writing is something that I've always been passionate about. And also, um, this is just, this is my life, you know, living, um, in a bicultural family and parenting. It's what I know and so that's what I write about. And I hope, I'm motivated by hoping that I can share with other people and that they will find it helpful too. Um, especially those who could be in the same kind of um, situation or the, the same background where maybe they live in an area where they don't have the resources um, that support their biculturalism, but they can go online if they have internet access and find that support. You know, even through your projects um, that you do, uh, the diversity project, and um, there's so many great resources online. Um, another motivation is, um, you know, for my children, uh, just so that they they have a record of kind of what, what mom did and what they did, because I do include them in some of my blog posts. And um, I also, this was something that started as, like a hobby for myself and I wow. shared it with my friends and family. I didn't know where it would take me. It's kind of evolved, has a life of, of its own. It's come from um, a hobby and evolved into a part-time job. And that's the great thing because I'm supporting my family too with this and um, that motivates me as well that I'm able to do that can't think of any motivation that's better than that. It's like you're doing what you love mm -hmm. and you are you can make a living out of it. So Yeah, and, and you do the same too. As you know, passion can take you 
uh, to far places, you know, because you, you've just got that drive, which means that even when you hit the bumps in the road and the challenges, you're still going to move forward because this is your passion and what you want to do. I see that in you a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Maria, why don't you share with viewers uh, your links uh, to the blog and to social media? Great. You can find my blog at biculturalmama.com and I am on Facebook and Twitter, Google Plus and Instagram all under Bicultural Mama. I will definitely include all those links in the description of the video, so make sure you check them out. Maria, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for sharing this beautiful experience that you've had uh, through motherhood, but also through Bicultural Mama and making it possible for us to learn from your experiences and, and benefit from them. So thank you very much for your time. And uh, please keep doing the great job that you do. Great. Thank you. Um, thank you so much for having me here. Uh, I really appreciate it. And you keep doing what you do too, because you do such a great job. If you enjoy this video, please hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe and visit us on www.hellomahalo.com. Thank you.